Today I'm going to be reviewing Process Audio's Sugar plugin. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now, if you'd like to improve the sound of your songs dramatically with a quick and easy to use plugin, then I may just have the review for you. But before we get into that, if this is the kind of content you normally like to watch, all about home recording, DAWs, plugins, gear reviews, that kind of thing, then please do help me out by subscribing and ring the bell on YouTube so you get notifications about my future videos. So I've been trying out Process Audio's Sugar plugin, and a quick spoiler, I think they actually do deliver on their promises of this being an audio sweetener and easy to use. And that may be a good and a bad thing, depending on your perspective. I'll be discussing that at the end of the video, and I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments, so please stick around for that. But first of all, let's take a look at the plugin. So here we are looking at the main interface and I happen to think in my personal opinion that it's a very, very nice looking user interface. There are not too many controls to look at, so it's very, very accessible and quick to get to know. But before we get into actually using it, I wanna mention two or three things. First of all, if you're listening on your phone through your phone speaker, then you're probably not gonna hear much difference as we start to use this plugin. So I highly recommend to at least least use the earbuds on your phone um, or use some decent headphones or better still use your studio monitors to listen to this video so that you can really hear the benefits of this plugin. The other thing that I'd like to mention is I am using this on the master bus of uh, my song. So I'm using it as almost like a mastering plugin, but you can use it on individual channels. You can use it on individual instruments. So if you'd like to see a video of me doing that, then please let me know in the comments. And if I get enough people requesting it, then I'll go ahead and make that video. Now I'm gonna be using a song of my own for an upcoming EP. It's it's called I Don't Buy, and we're going to be listening to just the chorus section of that song because it's got the most going on in it. It's towards the end of the song, it's got vocals, backing vocals, guitars, bass, drums, piano, some organ, a few bits and pieces in there. So it's a fairly loud section of the song. So before we do anything with Sugar, let's first have a listen to that chorus. And I don't buy what I've been sold and happiness is So right away your eyes probably been drawn to the spectrum analyzer over here and this is where some of our main controls are. You see these four bands here which relate to uh, four areas of the range of frequencies in the song. We've got a low band here and the controls for that really control the very bottom end of the song. Um, things really like bass drums, bass guitar and some of that low rumble that you get. Then you've got this that is labeled the medium uh, bar, but I would sort of describe it as the low mids. Then you've got what I would call the high mids, and then the air band. Sounds nice, doesn't it? That's really for the very top end of the mix and all of that breathiness that you might want to draw out. So let's start off by messing around with the low end and see what we can do with the bass end of the song. We'll start playing and we'll gradually add it in. And I don't buy what I've been sold And happiness is many gold Another one can fill your soul No, I don't buy what I've been sold So I like it around about there. What I've been taught now, the sort of design principle behind this with each of the bands is that you'll push it up to a level that you kind of like, and then you'll play between the two switches. Now on this low band, the two switches are thick and punch. So hopefully they speak for themselves, but in the mode that I was using it there, um, it's just adding a lot of nice thickness to the bottom end of the song. But I actually want this song to be more punchy. I want that bass drum and the bass guitar to be a bit more punchy. So I'm gonna uh, listen and I'm gonna switch between thick and punch and see if that's what I like. And I don't buy what I've been sold 
But happiness is made of gold Or another one can fill your soul No, I don't buy yeah, I definitely like it with the punch setting. Now, if you can't quite hear what's going on, I found it useful to really push it up to an extreme level so that it's sort of emphasized exactly what it's doing. Let's have a listen. And also with any of these bands, if you can't actually sort of hear exactly what they're doing, you can click this button down here, which is effects only and that will play sort of the effects only. So let's have a listen. So when you're first starting out with this, if you're just not really sure what any of the bands are doing, then I highly recommend using effects only. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that around about there and uh, let's move on to the next band, which is the low mids. This is a nice place to sort of thicken up the overall sound. Um, they've got two settings, warm and broad. I'm not quite sure which one I like. You have a listen. And I don't buy what I've been sold And happiness is made of gold Or another one can fill your soul No, I don't buy what I've been sold Okay, so I've decided to go with warm on this particular occasion. Um, I'll sort of might review that later as we use some of the other bands. Now, it's all sounding sort of not muddy, but we've concentrated a lot on the bottom end. So let's move on to the high mids. Let's have a listen and add this high mid section in. And I'll also switch between uh, shine and excite. This makes quite a bit of difference when you want to draw out particular instruments or uh, channels such as vocals, probably uh, the mid to high end of a piano or a guitar, those kind of instruments when you want to draw those out, maybe even snare drums, that kind of thing. So have a listen. I don't buy what I've been sold And happiness is made of gold Or another one can fill your soul No, I don't buy what I've been sold So I'm feeling a lot more energy in those areas when I've got it on the Excite settings. So I'm going to leave it around about there for now. And then last, we'll be looking at the air band. And you want to think of this in terms of air, perhaps the breathiness in someone's voice or that really sort of nice tingle at the top end of a hi-hat or some cymbals or even those sort of pick sounds on... Um, on a guitar, those types of things. This is what you're trying to improve here. I really like this band. It's my favorite band. Have a listen. Okay, so I'm liking the uh, yin setting there, so I'm going to leave it there. Now, the last thing I'll do at this point is now have now I've got all of the four bands up. I'm going to have a listen to it as a whole and just make some slight adjustments to all of them. So let's go again, listening to that chorus. And I don't buy what I've been sold. The happiness is made of gold. Or another one can fill your soul. Okay, so now that I've got that sort of balance between the four, I think it's a good time to show you another couple of things. When you're um, making changes to these things, um, it can start to increase um, the volume in particular areas of the mix or particular frequencies, and your overall volume can go up. And as we know, when you tend to push the volume up of something, it sounds better, which is not quite what we want because we want to hear the effect itself. So I've found a little feature they've got in here which is called level management to be quite a useful thing. When you have that switch on, the plugin will attempt to adjust the output volume so it probably matches the input volume more or less. So you're just hearing the effect without a volume change. 
And it's going to become very apparent when I start to use this uh, middle control, the big control here. What this does as you turn it, it pushes all of those four bands up and down relative to each other. So once you've got your sort of balance between those bands, then you can push up and down there. So I'm going to play the song again, and I'm just going to push that up and down so you can start to hear the difference. <laughs> Okay, so that's a really big part of this plugin dealt with there. Now we've got some controls at the bottom which also make a reasonable amount of difference. I'm going to start from the right hand side here and that's saturation. This is just a really simple saturation control. You've got four levels to it. There's the drive, distort and crush and they just really for me are sounding like four different levels of overall saturation as well as this knob to fade in and out the effect. So I'm going to pop this on drive to begin with and see what we've got. Let's try to store. And crush. Ooh. Way too much. That really adds some dirt. So I'm going to leave that back down on drive. And I think about round about there was good for me. And then we have um, some filters down here, a high pass and a low pass filter. So if you really just wanted to get rid of the bottom end rumble, especially the stuff that human beings don't really hear, then you might want to switch this on and move this slider up. Um, I'm not quite sure why you'd go much above the sort of real low end, but have a listen anyway. <laughs> So I'm going to leave that there around about 21 hertz. And also for the top end, there may be unwanted, really high stuff that you can just cut out. So we'll use that as well. So, you know, bear in mind with a control like this, if you go too far, you may be actually cutting out all the benefits of, say, um, if, I'm, if I'm using a very extreme low pass filter, I may be cutting out the benefits that I gained um, in the air band up here. So, you know, I think probably light use of this is probably recommended. You also can control how steep the curve is um, on that. So um, you've got a normal one and you can do a very steep curve. And, you know, this highlights one of the principles in this particular plugin, I think. They don't give you lots and lots, lots and lots of choices. They probably could have given you the ability to change the curve on this high and this low pass filter individually. Um, they probably could have given you, you know, five or six different curves to choose from. But obviously, they've made a design decision here, I think, to keep things really straightforward and simple for the kind of user they're probably targeting this at. So... Um, you know, if you want something much, much more granular that you can really dig into the details, then probably this kind of thing is not quite for you. Um, so with all of that being done, and of course, I've been talking a lot in, in everyday use, you'd use this very, very quickly. Um, let's have a listen to the chorus again without, and then I'll click with, and I'll sort of keep clicking between the two. So keep an eye on what I do here. I'll start off with it off and have a listen to the chorus. And I don't buy what I've been sold That happiness is many gold Now on Another one can fill your soul No, I don't buy what I've been sold I don't buy what Off. I've been taught They laid the trap, now you'll be caught Slowly dying with a thought That you've been killed So 
So as you can probably hear, my poor song sounds a little bit flat now without this effect punched in. I may have gone a little bit overboard on some of those bands, maybe a little bit too toppy. That is to taste. And really, this is where the actual skill of this plugin comes in. It's up to you to use your judgment. It's not a one button plugin, just fix everything and make it nice. You still have to decide when you're adding uh, these different bands in particularly, what sounds best to your ear. But you don't get much knowledge of what's going on underneath the hood. And probably there's a whole bunch of stuff going on which I imagine involves um, EQ, perhaps compression, uh, an exciter, obviously saturation, maybe some stereo widening going on there as well. Um, all kinds of plugins normally you'd have to use to get this kind of result. So as I've said before, I really do feel this plugin delivers on its promises. And I mentioned at the beginning that I think that's a good or a bad thing. Now I'm going to explain why I've got some misgivings about this by using a couple of analogies and they're old fella analogies. When I was a kid and I was first learning to play the guitar, we didn't have these things, guitar tuners. So I had to use these things, my ears, to actually tune the guitar. And during the process, I developed some listening skills or some skills for tuning the guitar. Likewise, we didn't have websites to go to to find out what the chords or the notes were in particular pieces of music. I actually had to listen to one of these and I had to figure out for myself what chords were being played in songs. It took me ages to realize that I actually needed a record player as well to go with it. Imagine. Anyway, my point being is that sometimes the easy way out also bypasses valuable learning that you need in order to develop skills. Now, there's some pros and cons to this, like I say. I would suggest that if you're primarily a musician who has a light interest in audio engineering for the purposes of just getting your music out there, then plugins like this can be a real godsend for you because you can quickly get results without much fuss. However, if your prime goal is actually to get a deep understanding of audio engineering and you want to gain lots of experience, then by using a plugin like this, you are potentially bypassing valuable experience you might get from using a compressor, an EQ, an exciter, saturation, that kind of those kind of plugins. So I'd like to hear your opinions on this. Is this a good or a bad idea to have simple to use plugins? Tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you've got to say about it. Now, a very quick shout out to a viewer of mine called Mad Mike 64 who came up with a title for a piece of music in my last video about video game music creation and the title he came up with was uh, hold on to hope and i've chosen that as the title which i liked the most so that piece of music shall forever be called hold on to hope thanks very much mike and i hope you keep watching my videos so if you'd like this video then please do hit the like button subscribe and ring the bell on youtube so you can see my future videos if you didn't like this video then please do hit the dislike button twice and I will hope to improve by my next video. See you then.